All right. Well, let me thank everyone for joining us, and thank you, Jonathan and Hatchbuck for collaborating with us on this webinar. Um, I'd like to start today's discussion by looking at some of the underlying drivers of marketing automation. Why are dozens of vendors in this space, and why have venture capitalists committed over $700 million to marketing automation over the past 10 years? We'll then look behind some of the hype we hear and examine who's actually using marketing automation and what some of the adoption trends are that we see. Lastly, I want to discuss some of the critical skills required to implement marketing automation. And I think skills is an important thing to look at because the skills that you need to implement marketing automation are the very skills that you need professionally to become successful marketers. So these are um, some headlines from around this time last year. In fact, July 29, 2013, you can see the big Wall Street Journal headline, Advertising Giants to Merge. Uh, it was front page in the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, head lead story in CNBC and other networks. Now, a merger of large firms is always big news, but this extraordinary coverage was really highlighting something else. So what, what's really going on here? Well, what's going on is that advertising and marketing more general is going through the throes of transformation or what economist Joseph Schumpeter called creative destruction. So what is creative destruction? As in nature, old parts of an ecosystem die and new growth takes its place. So what's causing creative destruction in the world of marketing? Well, to answer that, you really need to think about marketing before the digital age, before Facebook and social media, before Google, before mobile phones, and even before email and the internet. Content then was created by just a handful of companies. People like Don Draper of Mad Men in the hit TV show. It was essentially a top-down push of content. So what's happened between then and now? Well, as we know, we still have ad agencies doing big TV campaigns, but that's far from the full story today. Google and other companies as well have transformed marketing from, from basically a top-down push of content from a few companies to a much, much more efficient bottom-up pull from hundreds of millions of consumers, and that's being done through internet search. So what's going on? A company like Google was a startup in 1998, and today, last I checked anyway, it was valued at about $400 billion 15 or 16 years later. But it's more than just Google and search engine marketing. Content creation and dissemination has been transformed. These are just a few examples. 1.3 trillion searches are done annually. Not over 900 million websites have been created. 42 million blogs alone. And new forms of content are rising very quickly. Today there are over 500 million tweets daily and 4.5 billion Facebook likes. Now a like is the ultimate in abbreviated content. A like is the digital equivalent of a nod. But the rise in social media has not diminished in the least email. And today we have 144 billion emails a day and that's growing, still growing at a rapid rate. We also have over a billion smartphones. And this is one of my favorite examples, is that as of the end of 2013, there were over a million apps in the iPhone catalog. So for each of these new forms of content, 
every message sent and every interaction is a piece of data. So the transformation of marketing is represented both by the content and the, our ability to interact with that content. So because of the proliferation in content and our, and our ability to capture interactions that people have, marketing has become as data intensive as Wall Street. And that's why we call this, you've heard the term big data, this is considered the big data era. Which leads me to our definition of marketing automation, and that's marketing automation software enables marketers to manage the complexity of modern marketing related to the proliferation of content and data. So marketing automation technology is really at the nexus of data, content, and the business processes that we put around this. So the case for marketing automation is pretty compelling, but what's going on in terms of adoption? Well, we looked at this in our in our 2014 marketing automation ebook, and I'd like to share some of what we found here. You're looking at a, a, an image of the, what's known as the technology adoption life cycle. So in his book, Crossing the Chasm, Jeffrey Moore describes this life cycle in which adoption of a new product proceeds according to certain demographic characteristics of user groups. So according to this model, the first group of people to use a new product is called innovators, and that's followed by what we call early adopters. The chasm is that, is that important period during which a product is either broadly adopted or remains part of a niche market. So what we did in our ebook research, we dissected the product life cycle by firm size. So for large firms, what we're actually seeing is they, they have actually, in fact, crossed the chasm. Large firms have adopted marketing automation. It's an accepted tool and quickly becoming not just accepted, but a, a requirement to handle the complexities of today's marketing. So for a majority of large companies that don't currently use marketing automation software, they're either evaluating it now or will be over the next few years. So that's large firms. But what about small and mid-sized firms? So as you can see from this graph, Adoption falls off quickly as firm size decreases. Okay, so for firms, if we add up firms with 100, with 1 to 100 employees, we see that only about less than 1%, 0.7%, or about 50,000 firms out of nearly 6 million have implemented marketing automation. So there's plenty of room for growth here. So if you're a marketing professional in a small or mid-sized firm, this actually represents a great opportunity for you professionally. That's because we know from larger firms that adoption is occurring broadly, and those firms that get in early have an ongoing or systematic advantage that comes with the skills and experience accumulated during implementation. So let, let me repeat that because that's really important, I think, for marketing professionals in small and mid-sized firms. Those firms that get in early have an ongoing or systematic advantage that comes with the skills and experience that you accumulate during implementation. So what are these skills that marketing automation requires? There are five that I'll touch on here. Technology, content creation, list building, lead or tag scoring, and the ability to collaborate with sales. So I'll, I'll spend a minute or so on each of them. First is technology expertise. Well, it seems obvious that you need to understand the software if you want to successfully implement it. But you'd be surprised to see how many companies purchase marketing automation platforms to replace their email marketing, but keep on doing only their monthly email blasts while ignoring other powerful features 
such as lead or tag scoring or automated workflow. If you go to Hatchbuck's resources page on their website, there's a, a, a nice variety of rich content, including white papers, ebooks, and videos with details on product features and capabilities. There's really no excuse for not becoming an expert on the technology side of marketing automation. Content creation. That's another important skill. It's usually done ad hoc by small businesses. But here are five steps that I think you can that can help you to streamline content creation. We start by auditing content. Okay, many companies have lots of content spread out across many people and groups. Might include brochures, articles, videos, web page content, blog posts, and more. Next, map that content to the buying cycle. Okay, the buying cycle is a process a customer goes through from initial contact with your with your or competing product through a transaction. So at first they may seek more generic information, but as they get further through their buying cycle, they may see more they may look for more detailed or targeted content to help them in their decision making. So it's important also to identify after you audit and you understand the content you need to identify the gaps and create a plan to generate re required content. Another important step is creating personas to understand who your target audience is. So a persona is a way to think of a target customer segment not as a group but as a flesh and blood individual. This brings your prospects from the abstract to the tangible. And it's a common vehicle that marketers use to create good content. And related to personas, you can check out Hatchbuck's Resource Center and download their persona, persona workbook. And you can create your own using that guide. Lastly, create a content plan. A content plan specifies simply who gets what content when. Building an email list. This is not the most glamorous part of marketing automation, but it may actually be the most important. And one, one simple way to start is by asking. It's amazing how many firms forget to ask, can I have your email address? I'd like to send you an article or a price list. I get emails all the time without signatures at the bottom, which in itself is a big mistake. And even those with signatures usually lack a sign-up form of any kind. Ditto, that's the same for social media. I've seen companies with thousands of Facebook friends and Twitter followers with barely 100 emails in their database. Now, for most companies, an email is worth far more than a follower or a friend. Collect business cards. But don't just collect them. You must take the time to send an intro or follow-up message to all new contacts. And lastly, data collection must be built into your sales processes. Getting an email address should be a second nature as getting a name or a phone number. The next important skill is lead scoring, or what Hatchbuck calls tag scoring. So scoring leads is a feature of marketing automation that, that allows us to quantify a lead. A scored lead allows us to take action on information that was previously invisible to us. Your ability to deliver quality content to the right prospects and through lead scoring to deliver qualified leads to sales is ultimately how marketing is judged. Hatchbuck simplifies lead scoring for small businesses through the use of tags. Tags are terms that become associated with the content when they take an action online, such as click, clicking on a link in an email or visiting a web page. So through tag scoring, you can easily quantify a, contra a contact's interest in your business or even a specific service or product offering giving you the ability to send relevant content to the right prospects and to deliver quality leads to your sales team.
So the last skill I want to recognize is the ability to the importance of collaboration with with sales. Marketing automation enables marketers to better integrate with the sales team, and that is crucial. The management guru Peter Drucker said that the aim of marketing is to make selling super, superfluous. Well, we still need salespeople, but marketing automation allows marketers to de develop relationships before the sales contact is made. Because of this, marketing has become much more prominent. The role of marketing has become much more prominent in an organization. Marketing and sales can now be viewed as a single customer acquisition process. And success in marketing automation means working closely with sales as collaborators in that process. So the, the best way to actually learn more and delve into marketing automation is to take a live demo. So we, we want to encourage everyone to take a live demo and get your feet wet in it.